farming has the potential to sequester mm-hmm. carbon, to be climate positive, so to help reverse climate change. Regenerative, I think, above all, is important mm-hmm. for that from a planetary perspective. Yeah. Um, there's also, I, in regenerative systems, there's a number of biodiversity markers, which just means the number of different types of plants and animals, um, health of the ecosystem, health of the soil. Regenerative systems are have much greater resistance to drought, mm. but also to floods. You know, so you hear in the Midwest every three or four years, it's like there's floods and then these tomato farms are underwater and it's this huge mess. And uh, it's like, well, you know why the flooding happens and all the topsoil goes away? Because there's no root systems. There's no microbiome in the soil. Got it. So, you know, you, you don't typically see like a forest, right, have a flash flood and it all floats away, right? So when you have deep root systems and plants, that protects against that. Um, so these regenerative systems, although we're talking about grasses that might be this tall as opposed to trees, they have the same impact because underneath the soil, it's doing the same thing. Yep. So you're talking about a greater resistance uh, to climate change and a greater resistance to just the fluctuations in the environment. Mm-hmm. So why should you care, right? Right. Um, and I see the 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 why the the why of this for for humans is first off that hands down the products are healthier for your body mm-hmm. that come from regenerative systems. Yep. Hands down, that's no mm-hmm. doubt. Um, and the, the data that supports that is around the fat profiles mm-hmm. of the free range and you know, regeneratively raised beef, um, protein density, micronutrient density. Um, solubility, taste quality. Um, and okay, you're getting into a little bit of a fuzzy air if you say taste quality and health, but I think if you're truly enjoying your food and feeling, you know, a lot of satiety and gratification, that's- Has to taste good, right? yes. So that's a little bit more on the spectrum, yeah. right? But you're not needing to drown these products with like teriyaki mm-hmm. sauce and tons of, you know, vinegar and sugar and soy and all those things. Like you don't need to kind of mask the flavor of this or enhance the flavor because it's so bland. So the meat has great flavor. Has, is much higher in collagen, um, lots of great benefits there. Um, another kind of thing to, to think about um, in this is like, as a, as a citizen of the earth and being concerned about climate change, there's one level of implications, but on a more micro level, animal agriculture has hugely negative human implications. Mm-hmm. Um, and the impact, you know, it's around the actual plants themselves with these vast lagoons of manure, um, you know, animals on cement um, being fed a maladaptive diet, producing a lot of the E. coli. There's watershed issues there. There's also plenty of examples of like tetracycline and other antibiotics in the air and water being very prevalent near confinement animal uh, feeding operations, mm-hmm. which is what those operations are mm-hmm. called. Um, so there's also a human element where regenerative grazing is just a better thing to do for the humans that eat the product and then the humans who live near or work near those animals. Yes. Right. So I think if you, you know, what, whatever level you care about your own body and health, the, the health and bodies of people who work near your food sources and the planet, Regenera is going to score higher on all of those. What it's going to score worse on, it's more expensive. Yeah. yeah. That's really the bottom. Got line. it. 